Our sermon text for this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven came saying, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near and believe in the good news. Today begins Lent. I'll start. Today begins Lent. In this first Sunday of Lent, we hear two stories about Jesus. Jesus' baptism and his immediate testing in the wilderness. Jesus goes from an all-time high, a moment where he is joyously proclaimed, my son, the beloved, and prays that with him God the Father is well pleased to being run out into the wilderness with the wild animals. The baptism of Jesus is a defining moment of divine delight and blessing. The heavens are torn apart and the spirit descends like a dove on him. This is an anointing of power and prestige as never before, an acknowledgement of Jesus' messianic status. But then the tables quickly turn. Jesus goes from being announced from the heavens to being banished to the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is biblical shorthand for a place which seems void of God, a place where loss and death and rejection reign, a place that wants to lead us deeper and deeper and deeper into its bowels. This wilderness tempts us to seek power so we can survive, to perform, to be accepted, to follow any master that seems appropriate for the moment. Most, if not all of us, have been in a spiritual wilderness at one time or another. Maybe we didn't think of it as a wilderness. Maybe we described it as sensing that we were alone, that God had taken a back seat in our lives, that our faith wasn't strong enough or deep enough to get us through the crisis we were facing. Maybe we even thought of it as a time of testing. Now, many people believe that a pastor should have the answers to different, different, difficult theological questions, like why people feel alienated from God, and why does it seem as if people are being tested by God? Unfortunately, I don't have the answers. What I do have, though, is life experience. Things that I have endured, testing in the wilderness in which I have wrestled, and joy in knowing the immeasurable power of God in all of it. Let me explain and share for a moment. No one can ever prepare you for the pain associated with the death of a loved one. Though my mother struggled with breast cancer for 22 years, when her life turned toward the valley of the shadow of death, it was as if I was living a nightmare. 
Mom had always pulled through every cancer crisis before. She had undergone the mastectomy, endured chemotherapy and radiation, and had lived with chronic pain for years. But then Mom died, and I was plunged into the wilderness. This wilderness was a place marked with sorrow and heartache, a place where my faith seemed feeble and weak. My mother, who was my confidant and my friend, was gone. With that realization came a sense of loneliness and the beasts of defeat and despair and depression knocked at the door of my life. But because I knew the story of Jesus in the wilderness, because I knew that, he is, that his wilderness sojourn was not about exaltation and glory, but it carried loneliness and struggle as well as mine. I held on to the promise that like Jesus, I would be comforted and protected. I knew deep down inside that though the pain was real, the loss was great, and I missed my mother desperately, I would not be defeated. Death is tough, and it seems so very final, and yet love, the love of Christ, the love of family, the love of friends carried me through this difficult time. Then there are times when we struggle with pain, physical, emotional, and mental pain. I remember the car accident I had that left me shaken, bruised, and struggling with an AC joint separation in my left shoulder. The doctor did tell me that the pain would subside, but it would take about nine months. <clears throat> Again, I was thrust into the wilderness. Where are you, God, I cried. How can I be wife and mother and friend with all this pain? For weeks, I sat and slept in the recliner in our family room. The beast of despair and defeat and depression were again knocking at the door of my life. This time it was a friend who challenged the wilderness. Deb, get out of the house. Sit on your porch. Check out the bulbs that are blooming. Enjoy God in what you can see and smell as spring arrives. With much prodding from my friend, I finally did just that. I watched spring happen. Because I wasn't able to move any faster than a budding rose, I was able to appreciate miracle after miracle in God's creation. Even though the pain did take nine months to leave, I sensed God's hand in my recovery. Love, the love of Christ, the love of that dear friend, the love of my family carried me through. And what about divorce? Over a decade ago, I would not have ventured into trying to explain that wilderness. Broken promises, shattered dreams, debilitating rejection, unearned pain. My journey with divorce to find a new depth of wilderness, the beasts of defeat and despair and depression were no longer knocking. They had captured my heart and I thought my soul as well. Again, the love of Christ and the love of family and friends carried me through. It's a long journey when we're in the wilderness. It doesn't happen overnight. And sometimes it seems like it's never going to stop. But love conquers all. Look where I am today. Look where you are today. Let's listen again to the passage from Mark's Gospel, this time from the message by Eugene Peterson. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit looking like a dove come down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice, you are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, the same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and nights, he was tested by Satan. 
Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. The Gospel of Mark's reporting of the wilderness experience is straightforward and clear, yet shares very little of the details found in the other Gospels. Even so, this encounter in the wilderness allows us insight into the person of Jesus. Though Mark gives no particulars concerning the nature of Jesus' testing by Satan, we can be sure it was strong and ingeniously deceptive. It seems to preview the many struggles and tests he came across, he worked through, he conquered throughout his ministry. Demons, forces of nature, opposing clergy, and even his friends and followers who turned away from him. Yes, Jesus experienced the worst of it. Because of that, Jesus can identify with us we were and are also tested in the wilderness. Don't discount that. Remember Paul's words from the book of Hebrews. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect, every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Friends, no matter how hard we try, it's impossible to escape the wilderness. It creeps up without warning, many times blindsiding us, impacting our emotions, and challenging our faith. But one thing is certain, we do not enter the wilderness so we can crumble. Like Jesus, our wilderness experiences are meant to strengthen our minds and our hearts and our souls. They are not meant for our ruin, but for our good. They are meant to be tests from which we can emerge as stronger disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we find ourselves in the wilderness, we cannot allow ourselves to imagine God as an angry, threatening parent, ready to yell at us, slam the door in our face, or kick us out on the street because, it, because we haven't made the grade. If we do that, we will fail at the first whisper of testing. But if we remember the voice of God that spoke those powerful words of love, we will find the way through. And maybe the way may be long, the way may be difficult, but we will walk with our Savior through it all. Remember, the angels that tended to Jesus did not keep Jesus from being tested by Satan, just as they could not keep him from Calvary and the cross. Rather, the angels were there to assure Jesus that his beloved Father was watching over him, was loving him, and was empowering him with the Holy Spirit. Jesus went into the wilderness because all of us go there at one time or another. He experienced what we experience, and Jesus was able to go forth from the wilderness because he heard God's words of love, God's words of life. Friends, so can we. So do we. Friends, this is how we get through our wildernesses. I cannot nor will not discount the pain and heartache that the wilderness brings. I cannot nor will not discount the reality of Satan's testing. And I shall not discount the fact that we are not alone. As the angels were with Jesus, Jesus is with us. Jesus says, believe the good news. When we believe in the good news, we take Jesus at his word. We accept that God is the kind of God that Jesus has told us about. And then we can trust that God so loved the world that God will make any sacrifice to bring us through our wilderness. 
God will prove to us that what sounds too good to be true really is true. When we trust God with our wilderness, we will emerge as stronger disciples of Jesus Christ. We will live through our wildernesses, though the road may be rocky. But we will live because we will carry God's word in our hearts, the word that is known as Jesus Christ. Jesus, the word of love. Jesus, the word of life. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Lord, you never tell us that life is easy. And you never tell us that we journey alone. So in these times of despair and defeat, these times of difficulty, let us know that you are with us, that we are not alone. And though it may seem as though our journey through the wilderness continues on and on, we know that your love defeats all. So help us to embrace that love. Help us to know that love. And help us to call on that love named Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. And so together, 